Right, so far this morning we have heard about rapid progress in AI, the future world of agents and ways in which businesses can use AI to realise meaningful value across more than just the bottom line. However, we also know that for many organisations, AI projects have simply not delivered desired returns. Some never get beyond pilot stage and many struggle to scale. With this in mind, our penultimate session of the day is going to deep dive into a successful AI implementation, highlighting what it really took to overcome barriers, achieve success and scale AI value. Joining us to host the session is William Saba, Vice President and Global Microsoft Consult Leader at Kindrel. William played a key role in launching Kindrel's AI readiness program in collaboration with Microsoft, supporting organizations in building strong data foundations and deploying enterprise-grade generative AI. William is joined by Anders Bjornrud, CTO of Care Safety Innovations, and Kate Rosenschein, Global Technology Director of Strategic Partnerships at Microsoft. Over the next 20 minutes, William, Anders and Kate will be bringing to life how Care Safety Innovations, with support from Microsoft and Kindrel, turned ambition into real business value and will be sharing what we can all learn from that journey. Over to you, William. Thank you, Catherine. Kate, Anders, a big and warm welcome to you both. I'm super excited to be here with you. Today's session is all about how we can turn Gen AI from big ideas to real world uh, impacts and results. And with the right vision, with the right technology and the right partnerships, we can make that happen between Care Safety Innovations, Microsoft and Kindrel. We have a fantastic story to share, so let's dive in. Perhaps let's start with you. Anders, can you tell us more about Care Safety Innovations and what were the business challenges you were looking to solve and how did it lend itself to AI? Uh, that's a good, good question and thank you for having me. Um, Care Safety Innovations is focusing on a really big challenge and that is care in homes in the UK alone. Um, it's 1.7 million caretakers in the UK alone and we have even less, and the scale is going down as well for the people who handles that care. So we are focusing on the challenge on how to deliver safer care, more efficient care, and focus on the human part. So the big question is, we are asked ourselves is, how can we adopt to that and help them do that? Amazing. A lot of organizations today talk about AI but not so many make that leap from idea and proof of concept into production. And Care Safety Innovations managed to do so, and you have an up and running AI-enabled solution implemented. So what were the factors that helped you do so? First of all, we started off by thinking that AI should be part of the foundation, not something that just should come in step three of our, our uh, application. Um, on top of that, we need partners to do so. So we figured what would it take to get to, to that point? So we started with the business side. We started with the main pain point for the care providers in the UK. We partnered up with a few of them and specifically one down in Bournemouth, we got a lot of input and then we configured and developed a platform. And from there, we attacked the market to be able to deliver to even more. But the key thing is to, is to um, focus on the challenge. And on top of that, we partnered with Kindrel to have the competence to do so and build this platform with AI to take it from you know, pilot to production. Uh, and even Microsoft uh, with the Azure platform, so we can build scale and have it secure and compliance all the way. So the, the key thing is to have partners and do it the correct way. Thank you, Anders. Kate, over to you. Microsoft clearly played a crucial role into these partnerships. Can you share more about that and share how did Microsoft and Kindrel help Care Safety Innovations in scaling AI? Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you for having me. Um, 
What I love about this story is that you came with a very clear business objective, a clear problem statement, and an idea of how um, advanced technology, such as AI, could really plug into that. Um, and what was great is, you know, from the Kindrel side, you bring in that consulting, that sort of longer term business vision, if you will, and not just treating it as, you know, a POC that, that will end up going nowhere, <laughs> in the graveyard of many POCs, um, but really being thoughtful about it um, and looking at it as a long term business outcome and not just a technology project. Um, where we came in is sort of powering it with, with the Azure platform and really working together to make it an enterprise grade solution, um, especially in, in an area that's quite sensitive, right? There, there are data considerations, um, there's infrastructure considerations, um, using AI responsibly as well. Um, and bringing that all together was, you know, hopefully <laughs> the results speak for themselves, yes. um, but it really starts with that idea you know, we can power with, with the technology, but if you don't have a clear idea of what that ROI is and what your business objectives are and what your customers want ultimately, um, or your end users, if, if you think about it slightly differently, it's, it's not gonna be very successful in, in the longer term. So that's where I think it sort of tied together really well and each company brought forward their capabilities to achieve that. So a full AI stack and strong platforms with the right vision, with the right skills, we, we managed to do so. We've mentioned already how hard for some organization to go past that POC stage and, and rapid prototypes and even idea and theory. Um, Anders, as you were moving to production, what were the challenges that you faced, whether organizational, cultural, or from a technical standpoint that you, you, you faced a little bit for, for that like, <laughs> stage to, to go past that and implementation. Yeah, so first and foremost, we have been talking a lot of the, today about adopting to AI and how to use mm -hmm. it and how to use it correctly. And the other part is behind the scenes. So how can we create that platform? What competence do we need? Do we have the right people? Do we have the right talent? All that to build the platform and then being able to adopt our users to it. And secondly, it's all about winning the minds because we are met with a lot of carers and also other generic IT people, which is using AI, that says, are you going to replace me? That's the big question. And we are saying, no, we will not replace you because we would like to, for you to have more human focus inside the care visits so we can speak and they can speak back to the care instead of the care having to go, you know, all the digital tools all the way. So we prefer to think of ourselves as helping with that. So, but again, it's a lot of effort to, to get there. But when you, hang, when you get there, it pays off. <laughs> Absolutely. There is like the design, there is the change management, the culture. It's not just the, uh, the technology. Correct. Kate, Andrew spoke about the importance of having the right foundations in place. Where is Microsoft providing companies to help them scale AI? Yeah, so um, f first of all, I love that sort of human element of technology. And I think ultimately, like, that is the goal, right? So how can people um, work with technology better um, to get outcomes that allow them to do things that are inherently human, um, <laughs> such as social connections, uh, judgment, etc. cetera? Um, I think from a Microsoft perspective, uh, we come at it for diff from different angles. So first of all, there's the skilling, and I think um, someone touched on it before. I don't remember who, but we were doing a lot in, the, in this space. Um, obviously, not just for companies, but for greater society, because ultimately, these are the people that will then go and work for these companies in one way or another. So really thinking about it more holistically. Um, there's the business side where we partner with, you know, partners such as Kindrel to really tie that together, right? The capabilities, the skills, the thoughtfulness. Um, and finally is the technology piece, right? So how do you think about technology um, in a fast evolving pace, um, which, you know, not just from, from an AI perspective, but all, all the capabilities that need to sit around that. So I think, each company tends to be unique, 
Um, but ultimately it comes down to the skills and the understanding and not just technology skills, but understanding how um, and not just the what. Um, it's, it's the business requirements. Um, and finally, it's, it's the technology itself and really thinking about it more in, in the longer term. Love that. It's really holistic. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I keep hearing a lot from leaders like yourself, Anders, when I speak to our customers is the ROI question, <laughs> right? Uh, whenever there is an AI investment, the question is, where is the ROI? Um, so within Care Safety Innovations, where did you see the value of AI and how did you unlock that value? And more, impor more importantly, as well as how do you measure the value of AI? That's a huge question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to answer it. A million it. dollar question. Yes, exactly. yes. And we're still developing how to do the KPIs for measuring ROI. But I think, first of all, we need to think about the efficiency out there in the field because we are operating in a healthcare sector in the UK. It's really low profit business. So we are measuring what they are doing, how much time they can use to do something else that is revenue stream for them instead of doing administration. So we have seen uh, examples where, they, where carers actually use 40% less time um, for their tasks mm -hmm. with our tool, the Vita Care Companion, we call it, the VCC. And secondly, <clears throat> we also uh, measure the time for the carers to actually, in every care visit, they have to produce something called care note. And that's a in the end, it's a legal document if some things were to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing with the AI platform, because we are giving that an objective sort of way, instead of the carer mm -hmm. writing whatever they want. Um, and that has taken the time down from five minutes, even more, down to one minute, maybe one mm -hmm. and a half minutes. So that's a big, big thing for them. So freeing up time for the caregivers to focus on the human part, which is very important, I yes. love that. I would love to also add the third thing because we are actually being transparent. So we are giving access, we are not giving access basically because ESI and Care Safety Innovation can't see anything, but the providers are giving families access and maybe other third parties as councils. So they can see everything inside the family portal instead of having to call for every little bit of thing they want of information from that care visit. So more transparency as well. Yes. Love this. We've heard earlier from Azim, but also Patrick and uh, Ishmael, how the true evolution of AI, and that's like really impressive how fast moving this market is. If you were to give one piece of advice for the leaders, for the companies that are looking to really go beyond that rapid prototype and ideas and theory to the skill and the implementation, what would that be? I think I touched on it earlier, but I think start with the challenge instead of the technology, because you need to figure out what are keeping people up at night, and then you need to figure out how you can build a solution to help assist on that problem. Love this. Any other tip you want to add? Uh, <laughs> I have a lot. I said one. But <laughs> <laughs> you said one. I probably have more, um, but it's doing it the right way. So instead yeah. of figuring out you need this today and don't think about tomorrow, start thinking about tomorrow as well. Because when you get to tomorrow, you would probably not like to do the rework. So do the, do the steps one at a time. Love this. Maybe now for you, Kate, um, again, in this fast moving market, where is your advice for companies to stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm just going to sort of echo what you were saying, and, and it is really understanding your business, your customers, um, your future customers as well, and how in the longer term technology plugs into that because the space is evolving so fast, like super fast. So uh, I, like, I'd love to be a futurist that can predict like what's going to happen in even six months' time. Um, but thinking about it more holistically and being prepared for the evolutions that come and also being thoughtful about it. Um, not every single part of the organization um, 
is a good candidate for plugging in generative AI. I think there's other tools that are applicable. So really understanding how to use it in the right way um, and thinking about it long term are the two elements, along with you know, treating it like any sort of change, right? So the skills, um, the capabilities, the training that you have to give your employees, but also, you know, wider society in that sense. Thank you, Kate. Thank you both for sharing these fascinating insights. I think we have some time to um, take some questions from the audience. So first question is, where is your position regarding this phrase? Your job is not at risk from AI. Your job is at risk from a person who knows how to use AI. Anders Kate. Should I start? <laughs> yeah, you can start, <laughs> please. So I think our focus should be on using AI to help us do our jobs instead of having AI do the job because there will always be this human part of it. And I think the good news is it's becoming a lot more accessible. So not to age myself, but I learned how to code on a piece of paper. <laughs> and that would be marked by a teacher. Um, now there are all these tools that really unlock that creativity. Um, and you don't need to, to under, like you need to sort of understand some elements of it, but you know, people can get into it and adopt a lot quicker than before. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think it's, it's easier to get started. The interface is more linguistic. It's, it's more interactive than what computer systems were, I mean, even 10 years ago. So yeah, that, that's what I would, I would say to that. So get your hands dirty. And to be honest, um, with all the low code, no, no code capabilities, as yeah. you mentioned, it's so easy now to really ramp up and get to use that and know how to use it and become yeah. native whatever you are in the organization. The second question is, what does it take to move out to the, from the POC phase and move to the production? My enterprise clients are already well aware of the potential of Gen AI, and now they expect consultants to help with the next phase. What do you say to that, Anders? I think the really important thing to keep, keep focusing all the way from idea into proof of concept, into pilot projects, and then into production. Because if you lose focus, then you will not be able to put that POC into production. Mm -hmm. I think uh, focus, strategy, and having the processes is really important. Perfect. There is actually another question for you, Anders. Um, <laughs> can you tell us more about your solution and what it does? Is it a physical bot, a screen, a voice? Where is the interaction with the patient? So, we are not trying to have any, in, uh, have any communication directly to the caretaker from our platform. We have some sort of a mobile device hanging on the chest. Um, and we have the back office and the family portal and all that stuff uh, in the web as well. Uh, the thing is that we are going into a home care visit and we are documenting everything. Mm. So we are recording a video once we go inside to catch whatever the status are, how are you, all that kind of stuff. We are documenting with video as well, the medicine administration. We are documenting if something critical were to happen, if they have some kind of wound or need something in particular. And also the carer are able to connect with the back office directly so they can push this button called online assistance. And then if they are unsure what to do, they can actually ask the back office, what should I do now? Mm. Um, on top of that, we are also documenting the last stage. So when the carer leaves the care visit, we document how are you now, everything happened as it should, and then we make a transcription of that into the objective care note being the legal document that is required by law. Thank you for sharing. I actually saw the video on this. It's pretty <laughs> impressive, so congratulations on that. Anders, Kate, thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this in exciting insights on this partnership. I'm going I'm to now hand it over to Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.